Flipper. Nemo. Moby Dick. SpongeBob SquarePants. Patrick. All these sea creatures will be saved, as I told you yesterday, here at the Zender Special Secrets in Daniel. You never thought you'd be hearing this kind of truth in Secrets in Daniel. That sea life will not require water in the new earth because there is no sea on that new earth. Read Revelation chapter 21. John said, I perceive no sea in it. People have lamented to me. Oh, what about Flipper? What about Nemo? What about Moby Dick? I appreciate that there are people out there sympathetic toward Mr. Dick, the famous whale. I appreciate that. And of course, SpongeBob SquarePants, our favorite sea creature, we want him to fare well during Eon 5, and he is going to fare well in Eon 5. Let me review for you the three epical days. I touched on it yesterday, and uh, we're going to find peace from this. You know, some of you are writing me and say, Martin, you're getting a little bolder. I notice people say to me that you're um, a little more animated because, well, I, I was very shy at first, but now I don't care anymore. I was very worried that the walls were thin, and they are, and people are hearing me, and um, and I know they are, but you know what? They need to hear this, so I am just waxing bold, and it's like you're going to hear information that's going to change your life. I, I'm very shy, though. People are stunned to hear that I'm a shy person. I don't like to uh, give this truth to anybody who doesn't want it, but um, if they want to listen, I'm here to give it to them, even inadvertently. The Day of Man that's now. And again, we talked Monday about the prerequisites to glory. Humiliation, bad government, problems, evil, death. These are all preliminary things, not eternal things. They came to pass. One of my favorite sayings, it came to pass. Love that saying. Why? Because it didn't come to stay. These things are transient, leading to the glory. Man's day is a prerequisite to the Lord's Day. They told me in Catholic Church that Sunday was the Lord's Day. Show me the verse. Show me the verse. It's not there. Because there's no such thing as the Lord's Day being a day of the week. The Lord's Day is an epical day. It's a day when Jesus Christ reigns on the earth. Dan Sheridan and I were talking about this yesterday. And um, he was wondering... Does the Lord's Day begin with the day of indignation, with the day of tribulation? Now, do you know why that day is coming? Why the day of why the seven years of tribulation is coming? Is it coming because God's pissed off at humanity? Is it coming because he's ornery and he just wants to finally get revenge on all the people of the earth and on the earth itself? No, not at all. It is a preparation. Remember the rouser? the spiritual being that poked Nebuchadnezzar and brought him to his senses, there's going to be a whole bunch of rousers, some big, heavy-hitting rousers that are going to rouse this earth out of its lethargy, and it's going to bring the kingdom to fruition. Remember the birth pangs of Israel? That's what we're going to be seeing, the delivery to come. There's another great example of the bad comes first, then the good, childbirth, and God is compares Israel's coming into the kingdom to childbirth. The mother is lamenting and pushing and crying, convulsing. And yet, when the child comes forth, the pain is forgotten for the joy of the life laying on top of her chest, suckling from her. This is Israel. The world is going to be suckling from Israel's providence in the thousand years. But leading up to that is a horrific birth experience, coming through the birth canal. All of that takes us, it's the crisis between the day of man and the day of the Lord. Now, we also hear of the coming of the day of God. Peter talks about this, I believe, in Second Peter, the day of God. There's another crisis at the end of the Lord's day. It is called the Great White Throne Judgment. Preceding that is the destruction of the planet. The planet Earth, 
the present the present earth we're on this oblate spheroid third rock from the sun will survive into the thousand years but it will not survive into the following eon the new heavens and the new earth after that it's going to be retired its number is going to be hung from the rafters at the stadium and we're going to have a new heavens and a new earth that is the day of god and as these days progress, we see more and more greatness and glory and revelation. God is driving toward the day of God. Obviously, it carries his name. Hey, God, what's your favorite day? Day of man? Nah. Day of God. That's God's favorite day. What's the Lord's favorite day? How about the Lord's day? Because that's when... Jesus Christ comes back to this earth, and it's going to be a much better reception this time. He deserves it. I'm happy for him that he's going to come back and be lauded and be praised, and he's going to come back in glory as Israel thought he was going to come the first time. I told you the prophets finally realized two comings of Christ. This throws people off. Shouldn't throw you off when you realize how God works. First the bad than the good. Isn't that simple? That's what I'm here for, to make these things simple. First the bad, then the good. Do you really want resurrection to be followed by death? Do you really want God's day to be followed by man's day? Do you really want Nebuchadnezzar's glory followed by his humiliation? No. God's doing it the right way. Now, Jeremiah wrote a letter to the exiles. Told you I was going to get to this. Here we are. It's Wednesday. It only took me three days. Not too bad. Jeremiah chapter 29. This is from the, I'm sorry to say, the NIV, the new incoherent version, and I apologize for that. But uh, I don't have my concordant scriptures with me, and we're just looking for the storyline here anyway. So if there was a serious translation issue, I would bring that to your attention and correct it. A letter to the exiles, Jeremiah 29. This is the text of the letter that the... This is actually part of the scriptures I'm reading. It sounds like some man-made introduction. It's not. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the other people, Nebuchadnezzar, I love all the other people, the priests, prophets, and those other people. I love it when scripture is vague like that. It gives me permission to be vague. And you know, I take advantage of that sometimes when I'm looking for a reference. I'm not sure where it is. Somewhere in Isaiah, read the whole book, you'll find it. Uh, my phone gave up. Okay, hang on. I got to refresh. Here we go. And to all the other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jehoiachin and the Queen Mother, the court officials and the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the skilled workers and the artisans. The artisans must not have been skilled workers. Ooh, I just discovered this. Let's bring the skilled workers over here. Oh, and you artisans. Ooh, that would have hurt. My feelings would have been hurt. So all these people were taken. The skilled workers, the artisans had gone into exile into Jerusalem. He entrusted the letter to Elasa, son of Shaphan. Elasa, son of Shaphan, take this letter from Jeremiah to the exiles in Babylon because this is a document. This is the Magna Carta. This is, I almost called it the Declaration of Independence. In a sense, it is. It's independence from fret from worry because jeremiah is bringing them a word of peace pretty good trick for the weeping prophet he entrusted the letter to elisa did i pronounce his name that way the last time i said it who cares son of shaphan and to jeremiah jeremiah sorry i mispronounced your name sir son of hilkiah whom zedekiah king of judah sent the king nebuchadnezzar in babylon it said verse four the letter that Jeremiah wrote to the exiles. And Jeremiah, by the way, I think this is important to mention, is speaking the words of Yahweh. 
This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile. Wow, listen to this. Did you hear that? This is what the Lord God says to all those I carried into exile. You carry them into exile, but we saw the videotape. We saw Nebuchadnezzar coming to Jerusalem. We saw his army taking people in chains to Babylon in a grand caravan. Yet now here you're saying you do it. This is the absolute and the relative perspective again. And we're going to see this because I'm going to dabble into Romans 13. You know I'm not going to be able to help this. I'm not going to be able to help it because I'm going to be talking about how we're to behave in an era of exile, being exiled. I won't be able to resist talking about the authorities in power now. Many of you aren't going to like it, but this is the way to peace. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Love that absolute viewpoint. He did it to discipline his people. He did it. Who put Obama in power? God did it. I thought it was the Electoral College. I thought it was Ohio and Florida. Well, those are relative causes. I thought it was the voters. Well, it was the voters, but it was God ultimately. Here's the advice. Verse 5. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Well, i got a lot to say about that. Let's go on to verse 6, if I can possibly get through this without commenting. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, verse 7, this is, okay, okay I'm going to comment later. No, I'm not. This is the tough one right here, verse 7. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. I'm going to read on the verse 8, 9, 10. Look, folks, I know this is Old Testament stuff. This is the Hebrew Scriptures, but this is so applicable for today. I'm going to finish this out and comment tomorrow. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, colon, quote, Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. Ooh, this is getting juicy. We're going to pick up with verse 10 tomorrow. I'm going to comment my head off tomorrow because I withheld myself, restrained myself so greatly today. And then we're going to dip into Romans 13. We're going to talk about our enemies. We're going to talk about enemies of God who happen to be in the polished halls of government. I'm sorry if that offends you, but I'm an equal opportunity offender. I tend to offend everyone. Those who want to hear the truth will hear the truth in my words. I offend people for a living, but I also make sense.